Isn't it funny how there's countless videos and books and even entire podcasts dedicated to love relationships, divorce, healing after a breakup, yet there is nothing even close when it comes to talking about adult friendships, navigating them, finding incredible relationships as an adult, when to disconnect from someone, how to deal with the grief of a friendship ending or friendship betrayal. And quite frankly, I don't know about you, but I think friendship breakups are way more painful because these are our people, especially as women. You know, we go so deep with our friends and oftentimes our closest friends know even more about us than our partners. And there's such a safety and such a reliance. And there's even a form of like a predictability. And then when it goes awry, it can really rattle our worlds. And I have a lot of experience with this, sadly, and especially over the last few years. And I want to break it open and talk about the stuff that needs to be talked about and the pain and the grief associated with it, plus the red flags that I would say are my like top 10 less obvious ones to look out for in your current friendships that will give you some spidey senses on maybe I need to detach from this person. Maybe this person's stay in my life has come to an end. If you're tired of hearing the same old basic mindset and motivational fluff talk, you've come to the right show. Welcome to Project Me with Tiffany Carter, the podcast where we dish on everything from managing that crazy brain of yours to manifesting abundance to my straightforward, actionable steps that will make you major money online. Now, I'm not your typical multimillionaire entrepreneur. It takes a small village to keep my anxiety and depression in check. I'm inherently disorganized with an intense obsession with office supplies. Your girl here is a digital marketing content expert who's generated over $200 million in sales. I promise by tuning in twice a week, you will get a much needed refreshing dose of truth, clarity, and cash making advice. Now let's get to it. What up, my people, my posse, my fellow crazies? It's your host, Tiffany Carter, and this is the show that is going to help you grow your business, your bank account, that big, beautiful brain of yours, your relationships, your abundance, and everything in between. Woo! In doing the research for this episode and reaching out to those of you who are in my audience, especially my secret posse weekly digest free email community, if you are not in that, it's popping. Okay. These emails come from me. They're written from my heart and it's exclusive content. And I encourage you replying to them. It's a safe space to get stuff out and be able to feel heard in a very short period of time, you know, taking a minute in your day. And I always send them out exactly when it seems like people need them. You can get on that list by going to projectmewithtiffany.com forward slash secret posse. I have something very exciting coming out soon. And the only way to get first dibs on it is by being on my secret posse list, unless you're a client of mine. So make sure you do that. Also, I have your season of abundance guided walking meditation series that is out right now. These are my famous abundance walks, but they're in particular for this season because we're walking into right now our most abundant season of our lives. And this is going to cement that in as long as you dedicate time to doing this every single week. And they're designed to work in less than three minutes. There's a highlight on my Instagram that says abundance walks. And you'll literally see dozens and dozens and dozens of testimonials from people going, oh my God, this actually works. Yes, it does get to be this easy in order to shift yourself back into that energy of abundance, which only makes your manifestations happen at a much faster and bigger level. All of that is inside the show notes. You can swipe up 
or if you are watching on Project Me TV, what's up, my YouTubers? You can go into the description and the link is there, projectmewithtiffany.com forward slash season of abundance. This is my free gift to you as well. Wow, this friendship thing, man, it's no joke. I called 2022 the year of the reckoning where I had a clearing of so many people in my life. It was insane. And I've had some clearings recently. And the universe, God, does for us what we are not maybe able to do for ourselves, you know, where it puts us in enough pain so we can see that this person, maybe we thought they were a cheerleader, we thought they were a supporter, but they were really a hater in disguise. And it brings it to our attention in a way that is so painful that we're forced to take action and cut this person out, distance ourselves from this person, whether it's a friend or it's a family member. And it sucks, but it's happening for our greatest good. It's the part that is really hard for me with all of the therapy I've done, with all the different healing I've done, and I continue to do the awareness I have and the fact that I can still have a blind spot for this trifecta combo. It's someone who is charismatic, talented, and highly toxic. <laughs> That's my trifecta. And now I have things in place and buffers in place and people in place in order to help me catch these less obvious toxic people. But I can guarantee every single person listening, unless you're someone who's totally shut down and you have keep your circle so small where you've cut everyone out or you isolate as a form of protection, which also really isn't healthy, by the way, but I get it. You have someone in your life, at least one person that you need to distance yourself from. And a lot of the questions that I've got when I put it out there to the community on what they wanted to talk about is how do you do this? You know, you identify someone, maybe it's not that they're a bad person. They're just not vibrating at the same level as you. You guys are on different timelines. They're stuck in scarcity. They're stuck in a victim loop and they could be the most lovely person, but you can't donate any more of your time or energy to this relationship because you're getting sucked down with it. And so you don't want to be a dick, but you also don't want to put so much energy into it where you're like, let's have a lunch and break up over lunch and let's, let's do this. It's like, no, you don't need to do that. And here are some options for you. Number one, I want to say with detaching from someone, if they are toxic to you, where you feel like shit around the person, you feel drained after talking to them, you feel they do a lot of manipulation, there's gaslighting, there's stonewalling, meaning like there's ignoring behaviors, you just don't feel good and you feel this person is like crafty and clever in that way and they're not going to be able to hear you anyway. If they can't hear you anyway, then it is actually further abuse on yourself for you to try to speak reason into them, for you to try to have an adult conversation, it's more wasted energy. With people like that, your safety needs to be your number one prior priority and your well-being. I know that you're of integrity and you want to go, I need to do the right thing and I need to do the proper thing. The right thing is taking care of yourself, truly. And I'm not saying that you don't handle things with grace, but it's not your responsibility if you know someone can't hear you or it's going to cause you more chaos to say something. So you can do the slow pull away. I call it the lean out. You're just slowly leaning out. They've lost privileges. They're on a need to know basis. They've lost uh, privileges to hang out with you. They've lost privileges for you to take voice you know, phone calls. They can slowly lose privileges. If it's someone where you're like, no, Tiffany, I've waited too long already and I can't do this another day, then you can't do this another day. Then you've got to cut the cord. 
And if they don't like it and they come back to you with some kind of nastiness, well, that's just validating. I recently had that happen where I knew this person couldn't hear me. What's funny is, is they think they're really self-aware. That's what I found fascinating. It's like the least self-aware person I've ever come across in my adult life. And this person, it would have been a waste of my energy and bandwidth. And this person couldn't hear me anyway. And yeah, those kind of people don't like it when you cut them off, when you're setting a boundary, when you're protecting themselves. And all that is, is further validation that you did the right thing. A truly caring friend who has any emotional IQ or awareness will notice if you've distanced yourself and pulled away and will come to you in a mature, in a kind manner and say, is there something that I did to upset you? I'd like to talk about it. I sense there's a distance between us. And you still have a choice whether or not you engage in that or not. Because some people are so manipulative, they know to even say stuff like that, okay? And just do the slow pullback. But you can also do the straight up cutoff where if you've waited too long and now it's so messy and you're done, then you're done. Cut the cord and you're done. Don't hang on by going, oh, I should probably send this person an email. That's another option. You can write a letter. You can send an email. You can write it and not send it, which I would prefer you write something and wait on sending it. Wait 72 hours. There's something that I learned in my recovery program about pausing. And if you're not sure what to do in a relationship, then you're going to do nothing. And that doesn't mean like, sit back and bury your head in the sand. It means allow some space and time and the answer will be revealed. More will be revealed. Turn it over to God, your higher power, the universe. Please help guide me in a loving, clear way of what I can do in this situation that is going to be safe to detach from this person. Some people were amazing people early on. Maybe it's a childhood friend. And I have a lot of clients that express that they've gone through this and they get so hung up on how much time will this person I've known since I was three, I grew up in the neighborhood with this person. And then there becomes this insane sense of blind loyalty that just because it's a long time friendship or just because they were there for you through an earlier part of you, your life when you were a shit show or you went through a big divorce or you were sick, that it's like now we have to have this undying, unwavering loyalty to this person, no matter what they do and no matter what their behavior is and no matter what they're doing in the reciprocity and bringing to the table in the relationship. And a lot of those relationships, you need to allow space for those to change and morph. Sometimes those people just aren't on your timeline anymore. They're not on the train, right? When we continue to grow, and I don't just mean in like, money. I'm talking personal growth, spiritual growth, awareness, healing, all the things and success too. When we continue to do that and our light just shines brighter and brighter, I'm going to tell you something that might not be fun to hear. And there's some of you listening that are going to go, she's right. That expression, it's lonely at the top. Oh God, I'm going to cry. It is you guys. And I'm not saying it out of a scarcity. When your light is shining so bright and you're doing all of these things that most people wouldn't do, right? You're continuing to show up for your dreams. You're putting yourself out there. You have outwardly success. You continue to grow, heal, share your gifts with the world. There's a lot of people that they were comfortable with you when you weren't doing that. They were comfortable with the version of you who was like miserable corporate Tiffany, right? Tiffany, who was in her very sick era from working myself nearly to death. Like they were comfortable with that Tiffany, but the healed Tiffany, this Tiffany shines too big of a light on the areas of their shadows that they're either not yet willing to address or do anything about And it makes them resent you. It makes them uncomfortable to be around you. It makes them even like victim me and them thinking, oh, she's better than me now. 
oh, she doesn't care now. All she cares about is like money and prestige now. Oh, they for they forgot about us. Oh, she's changed. I know a lot of you who've also gone through body transformations to where that happens as well. Like a lot of weight loss, or you really start doing a lot of work on healing your gut or your immune system. And you're just glowing and vibrating and your energy is in a different way. And those same people can't be on that train. They can't get on it. And you're dragging them along and that's enabling them and it's exhausting you. That doesn't mean they can't get on the train themselves. They have that option, right? Get on it themselves and do the work to get on it themselves. And they can jump a timeline and end up meeting you three years from now. And they're in that spot. And I've also had that happen, by the way. Sometimes there's too much time passed where you lose that connection. But it's it's kind of like, oh, you're here now. Like, I acknowledge you. I see you, right? And we have to allow ourselves to release these people so that it can be in their own stuff. And it can feel like you're discarding people, you're abandoning people, especially if you're someone like me who's been abandoned and discarded in childhood. And that's the last thing you would want someone else to feel. So then you hold on because you don't want someone to feel that way. Well, you're not in control or responsible for how someone else feels. You're responsible for your own well-being and you continuing to shine and your light. And some people, even though they are maybe healthy and safe to have this conversation with, they might not understand it and they might be very hurt by it. And you can determine if what's the best way to communicate that with them. It could be a letter. It could be a face-to-face -face conversation or it could be a slow detachment with someone and it needs to be what feels good to you, not you so worried about the other person. That's codependency, right? I need to make sure this person knows I'm not abandoning them. I need to make sure that they know like I value all the time that we spend together, but I just can't do it anymore. And I don't want them to feel a certain type of way. And I don't want them to hate me. And I don't want them to talk behind my back. And I don't want them to think that I'm better than them. And now I don't care about the people I grew up with or where I came from because now I have money and I have success or now I'm skinny or now I'm in a happy marriage or whatever it may be. That's not on you. That's, that's their journey. And I've got to tell you with some people, the healthy people, not the people who've remained toxic or the narcissists that I have accumulated along the way. The people who just aren't on that timeline yet, I've never not had one of them be appreciative some point later. It might even be 10 years down the road. I've received letters from people, people I've broken up with in romantic relationships, people I've distanced myself from where I find out they've been like listening to my podcast and they, you know, they, they come out through Facebook or somewhere else unexpectedly. And you can tell that they've done a lot of work on themselves and they were in a bad spot before. And it's beautiful. And I've been on the other side of that too, where I've had friendships where I was such a mess, especially in my twenties. And I know I was exhausting and draining to people and I lost friends because of it. So I've been on the other side. Don't think it's just me who disconnects and uh, goes no contact and separates from friendships and relationships. And um, it really hurts in the moment. But when I look back, those people that had to disconnect from me because I continue to do the work on myself, I completely understand. I, and I get it and I'm not mad at them. And in fact, it was good that they detached from me because it allowed me to be in even more pain, which then propelled me to do more work on myself. And I, I want you to hear that because some of you, maybe you haven't been on the other side of it. Now let's talk about the toxic stuff. People who are obviously toxic that's that's kind of easy, right? I mean, some of you keep some of them around for a variety of reasons, and that's just insanity, okay? Um, we can make excuses for people because 
of maybe they're sick or maybe they're going through something or maybe they have ADHD and we can come up with all sorts of stories to excuse unacceptable behavior. And the bottom line I want to share with that is, is as long as you have communicated to someone that their behavior is hurtful and unac unacceptable, and here's what is my boundary and my and the behavior that is acceptable to me. And if this person continues to do that behavior, you this person has to lose privileges and access to you in your life. You can't keep excusing it and keep allowing these people in. And I understand why it's so easy to do that, especially because they probably have other qualities that you delight in. If you are like me, where your friends are your family, I can hold on to people for too long because I don't have a family unit and I don't want to be without my people or I can fantasize and romanticize the positive qualities of the person and go, okay, well, they make me feel like shit when they do this and I feel used by this person and this doesn't feel good and I've set a boundary and they're not following it. But they also always pick up the phone when I need them. They're also really funny. They also accept me even when I'm at my worst. And that's accepting crumbs. That's accepting. That's basically doing an exchange of I'll take a lot of pain and discomfort in exchange for scraps. And that comes from stuff that's happened in significant relationships and childhood and adulthood. It could come from being bullied. It comes from a pattern thinking of like, it can sound like if you say things, well, no one's perfect. I'm certainly not perfect, right? Like maybe I'm being too particular. Maybe I'm being too demanding. Everyone has their shit. And my guess is you give people too much leniency and too much grace. And then who pays the price? It's self-abandoning when you do that. Bottom line is, is there a fair energy exchange and abundance reciprocity with a relationship. Do you feel that? And I don't mean tit for tat. Okay. I'm not saying I paid for dinner three times and they paid for it once. I'm not talking about that. It's like you're supportive and you're there for them. Are they also, do you feel supported in return? Okay. It might be in a different way because people have different capacities and talents and gifts and ways ways they show your support. You know, my friend Regina just shared with me, which was lovely to hear that one of my big gifts is my ability to hold incredible space for people when friendships, no matter if I'm going through hell or not, that I can hold that grounded space in a safe way. And that is one of my ways of showing love and support and being there for people. Someone else's way might be in doing quality time or doing an act of service for you, right? Everyone is different. That's why I'm saying it's a feeling. Do you feel that this person, when you're going through the people in your life, do you feel that no matter when you are high on life and amazing things are happening, you're dating someone new, you're engaged, you won an award at work, your business is thriving, you are you feel so much great energy in your body, you feel leaner than ever, like you got your new house, like exciting things happening. Are they equally as supportive when you have incredible things going on as they are when you're in the shits? I wish someone taught me this one from birth because if they're not, that is likely a hater in disguise. And it's one I've missed many times because I put a lot of weight on, well, you know, when I'm in a bad way, this person's like showed up for me. They pick up the phone. They're there. Well, you know what? I got to tell you something. I'm staring at all these different neighbors here at my beach house who some of them, I don't even remember their first names. If I knocked on any of their doors right now and said, I'm, an, I'm not doing well, I need help with this, they would all help me without a doubt. A lot of people will come help you when you're in need like that, right? What's more vulnerable and what's more treasured and what's more interesting to see is how people react when you're thriving, when you're shining. 
because that can make people really uncomfortable. And I want you to take a look at that. There's a lot of people who are only comfortable as long as you're matching their level of discomfort in their own lives. And again, I've been on both sides of it. You know, I can call myself out in my 20s. I didn't really want to be around people who their lives were thriving and everything was great because I was so miserable and barely surviving. I couldn't handle being around that light. I would call a lot of those people fake even. And maybe they were, but my guess is they weren't all fake. I just didn't believe that that was even possible to feel that way because I was on a completely different timeline. You know, I remember when I got engaged for my third time (laughs) and, you know, I don't, I don't, you know, have um, family to share that with. So I, my first call, my photo of the ring was to my best friend at the time. And her response was, well, that was quick. Well, first of all, it was a year, so that's not quick. And there was no celebration. And then it all became about that I'm going to abandon her because she's single and da da da. All, but there was no celebration. And that was the end of that friendship. And this was a very long friendship who I made a lot of excuses for this person because she is diagnosed as bipolar but she also chooses to not get regular therapy and she also chooses to not to not take the medication that's prescribed to her and that's on her but i made a lot of allowances and excuses for her behavior because of having a mental health disorder and i paid the price for it and that's why i'm giving you some examples some other ones that i didn't notice red flags were people resenting certain talents you have like me showing up online and me really doing all this inner child work and embracing being silly and having fun and incorporating that in my life and sharing it on the podcast and sharing it in my content. I didn't used to be this way. I didn't even have a favorite color for most of my life. This is as a result of doing a shit ton of inner child healing, okay? And I had someone in my life who I thought was literally like family to me and they'd make a lot of digs oh you're doing content again don't you ever get tired of doing that stuff why do you have to show so much online i got comments like making fun of some of my outfits like outfits like sparkles and like me wearing a wig and like i'm and here i'm delighting in it and kind of like those those cut downs okay this is not a friend. But then I would make excuses because on the other hand, this person seemed to show up for me and also repeatedly tell me they're my biggest supporter over and over again, but their actions were incongruent. So it goes back to the old adage of the words and actions need to match of people, but not in just a short period of time, especially when you're looking at like newer friendships you need to take a look at over a period of time, does this person's actions and their words, do they match? A lot of people are good with the mouth, as my grandma said to me. They're amazing at giving affirmation. They might even do actions like they're there for you. They pick up the phone. But when you really look over time, I've noticed like, are you giving them a lot of client referrals? Are you shouting them out online? Did When was the last time they gave you a client? When was the last time they wrote a review for something that you've done? When was the last time they shouted you out? And that's why when I say it's lonely at the top, I am very big on women supporting women, okay? And I delight in people who also have talents. I do love referring clients to other clients, clients to people I know, to friends of mine, because it's for the greater good. I know this person's good at what they do. This other person has a need. There's a trust built. Bobbity, bobbity, boo. And I, sitting back now more than ever, going, hmm, not that I do it out of where's my referrals in return. That's not, that's not true giving. 
I do it out of the energy of abundance, but you do need to take note and you do need to take an inventory. I don't mean like a calculated balance sheet, but you do need to take an inventory or you'll end up depleted and fucked and resentful and feel used and unappreciated, which I know some of you listening feel. And I know how that feels, especially when you're a giver. And recently I've really felt this way with several people. And I went, huh, when I really pull back, I've given this person hundreds of thousands of dollars in business. I don't remember the last time they even acknowledged like, an appreciation or a delight in that. I'm not saying the person's a bad person. Sometimes people's inability to receive and them not feeling worthy of receiving, they don't even aware of it. And it makes them not even say thank you for the things that you've done or even outwardly express their delight in having stuff done for them because they're so uncomfortable with receiving And those are people that you need to stop giving to. And I don't mean a halt, a punishment, but you need to pull back in how much you're giving because they can't receive it. And if you're giving to someone, you're pouring in love, time, energy, attention, money, your intellectual property, your advice, your skills into someone that can't receive it, the person who ends up feeling like shit will be you. You know, that's a such a wasted energy. And a lot of people aren't aware that they're maxed on their ability to receive because of their own worthiness. It's so subconscious. And that's not my job. That's their work to come up with. My job is to protect my heart and my energy and my time. And I am now pulling back on doing that. I would rather give to people who have the reaction of, oh, thank you so much. You send me the best clients. I'm so appreciative that you do that. And not just the words, but what have they also done back in reciprocity, right? Like maybe they don't have clients to refer because they're in a very different line of work or whatever it may be. But have they shouted your business out? Do they share your podcast? Do they send you a fucking fruit basket? (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, What is happening in return in action, not just words. And if it's, if it feels like it's even, and it feels good to you, then you'll know that. But if it doesn't, then you need to stop giving to that person and you don't need to say a damn word about it. There are people in my life right now who literally have no idea. My guess is they, it's not even on their radar. I could be wrong that they get no referrals from me anymore. They've lost their privileges simply because there's no even acknowledgement of it to the point where it's like weird. Like, that's really strange to me. I mean, I get referrals all the time and it's not like you need to send someone some marching band, but I absolutely say thank you for referring someone to me and trusting me with your client or with your friend or family member I appreciate it. And they're, they're great or whatever. You gotta, you gotta give something and that's okay. This is how we protect our heart. We protect our energy. Maybe you've given a lot of time to a friend, right? You've lent your ear. You've held a lot of energetic space of them being miserable and complaining, and there's no progress on their part. This has gone on weeks and weeks and months and months, and there's no progress and they're always a drain. Well, you, now you need to stop giving. Okay. Giving doesn't always mean money or clients, right? You need to stop giving there. There's some people that it's like a, it's a big vase with, and the bottom is open there. There's never enough. You can never give them enough. It's never enough. These are the takers in the world. They have a God shaped hole going on. They have their own deep wounds that, that need healing. And you could give and give and give and give and give to the point where you are left like a stump, like the childhood book, the giving tree. If you know that book, it's the, it's truly the book of codependency. And you're left as a stump and they can still tell other people 
that you are selfish, you're so wealthy, you don't give enough. You know who says this about me? My fucking mother to everybody who listens. And many people believe her. She's off in Los Angeles. She's discarded her mother and abandoned her mother. She's the worst daughter in the world. Meanwhile, this woman pimped me out and sex trafficked me from 11 to 21 years old. And that would have continued hadn't I had a, I guess, an awakening of sorts. <laughs> you know, it's unbelievable. And the other thing I want you to hear, and there's so much that can be talked about. And if you want another episode on adult friendships and navigating them, please take a screenshot of this episode, share it on your social media and tag me at Project Me with Tiffany. I'm at Project Me with Tiffany on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, on Project Me TV on YouTube. You can DM me on Instagram and or reply to any of my emails from my Secret Posse Weekly Digest list which you can get on that list by swiping up. It's in the show notes and get my season of abundance guided walking meditation series there as well. And let me know what topics you'd like covered. You can share a scenario anonymously and ask for advice. I've genuinely been through pretty much everything when it comes to friendships on both sides. And I have a lot of wisdom to share. And the grieving around it is real, especially when you feel like someone's solid, like you thought they were solid and then they do something so unexpected. Oh my God, it's crushing. There's almost nothing more crushing to me, truly, that makes me feel so unsupported and disrespected to where it blows me away. And again, it might not even be personal. This person could be going through their own shit and it wasn't like it was intentional and deliberate, but the bottom line is the behavior is still unacceptable and it still hurts. And it's a matter of when you're, when you're at a, ready to have the conversation with the person and if they can have a mature, loving conversation with a real apology and ownership on it, we like this, right? This is healthy. But if you bring something to someone's attention in a healthy, respectful manner from the eye perspective, right? And someone gaslights you, gets defensive, gets nasty, flips out. This is a no for me. This person is immediately done, immediately removed. Huge, huge red flag, glaring red flag. People are going to let you down. People are going to let you down that you hire. People are going to let you down that you fuck. People are going to let you down that you've known for a month, that you've known for three years, that you've known for 30 years because we're human beings. And then we have these expectations and people go through shit. It's how it's addressed and how it's handled and how it's course corrected. And I want to share this acronym that was one of the most powerful acronyms that I've heard that I use to, to this day to help decipher, is this person going to make it in the inner circle? Does this person need to be excused from my life? And it's the fog. This is something that um, narcissists, sociopaths, toxic people um, put other people in. And so the fog is a real thing. Like you're in a fog. You can't think clearly. You can't see clearly you're disoriented. You feel like you're in the twilight zone. You're like, this is, it's crazy making behavior. And it stands for fear, obligation, and guilt. If you feel from someone in your life in a consistent or regular state of fear, obligation, and guilt with someone beyond red flag, person has to go. Distance has to occur. Glaring red flag where you're like, even if you go, well, I don't know, maybe I'm being too sensitive and maybe I'm being too hard on them. And maybe I'm expecting too much. Uh, no, that's where, that's the guilt, right? Mm, I'm obligated because I've known this person this long, or they really helped me out with my first child. People can change. Okay. It takes a lot to earn my trust, but you also have to maintain my trust. And you do something to break my trust, 
it's very, very hard to get it back. I take trust incredibly seriously with my clients and with my friendships, you know, with relationships in my life. You know, it's like, and you have to allow room, of course, for grace. But typically, if you're wired more like me, you give people too much grace, too much leeway, too much rope, too many excuses. And then you end up paying the price for it in exchange of you getting scraps. And I want you to take that step. And whoever has come to your mind, it might be more than one one person of mm, so and so and so and so. Okay, they need they lose privileges. Even that is a first step. Even energetically detaching, even you slowly weaning yourself off someone where maybe you don't respond as quickly. You don't take their calls as much, right? You say for every uh, for every yes, there's four no's, right? Like some people have to detach more slowly and that's okay. As long as you are in the energy of detaching from someone who isn't serving you and someone who's draining you. But circling back to it's lonely at the top. That's not to discourage you from keep, you know, to continue to rise. It's because of your light shining so brightly there's so few people that are willing to do the work and show up regardless and do the damn thing and show up anyway. That is the lesser of the norm, right? The norm is to stay the victim, to not take action, to think the world owes them to play pity party, to have excuses. That's sadly, that's the norm. Okay. And when you do things that are outside the norm, it makes people really uncomfortable. And then your tolerance as you grow and you do inner work and you have your relationship with spirit, you become so fine tuned that your tolerance for other people's bullshit and unacceptable behavior becomes so little because you value yourself and your peace and your well-being and your abundance so much, which is a beautiful thing, that you're not going to tolerate what you used to tolerate. So it can almost make you feel like, God, maybe I'm being kind of a dick now. No, you are actually honoring yourself more now as the result of your work, and you have a lower tolerance for bullshit. My bullshit is, my, my level of fucks is pretty much zero, and it can be shocking to people that it's zero because they're used to being able to get away with bullshit with people. And even if you're manipulative with me and it's not out of malice, maybe it's out of your backs against the wall for what whatever the reason is, okay? You've temporarily lost your mind. Oh, it's noted. That doesn't mean you have to say something to the person. You don't need to put someone on notice that they've lost privileges. Most people who've lost privileges in my life, they have no fucking idea. And the ones that do, either they don't say anything about it because they fucking know. They know you know, and they don't want to talk about it. And then there are people who have talked to me about it because my absence and that space of abundance that they were getting from me now it's so loud and it's so painful for them that it gave them time to self-reflect and say did I do something to upset you I've noticed our relationship has shifted and in the conversation comes from a sincere place I will have have a conversation for with someone like that and sometimes the relationship can be restored and be even better than ever. And sometimes it can't because it's very hard to repair when you have broken a core trust with someone. I just want to normalize that this is a very real thing and the grief is painful and sitting in that dirty diaper until the universe brings you that new and healthier friend in, it can feel so fucking lonely But each and every time I've let someone go in my life, I've always had someone else come in who's the higher level, more genuine, new and improved, incredible friend that replaces 
the toxicity that replaces the dead weight that I had to release. It's just that the universe is waiting for us to release the people. It's not going to bring those new expansive people in when we're still holding on to the shit because you don't have space for these people. So you have to willing be willing to let go of this stuff and even sit in the in-between, which I have a great episode on that, right? It's that called like the messy middle of manifesting from a few weeks ago. And it does feel really messy. But if you're not willing to sit in that, you're not going to be able to call in and have the space to even call in to receive those abundant relationships that I know that you want. Wishing you great health, wealth, and worth as always. Love you. If you want to show your appreciation for me in the episode, writing a five-star written review on Apple Podcasts seriously means the world to me. I read each and every one of them. If you're not sure how to do that, it literally takes you seconds to Google, how do I leave a written Apple Podcast review? If you're a Spotify listener, tap the five stars, take a screenshot, share this on social media. Tag me at Project Me with Tiffany on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, on Project Me TV on YouTube. Leave a comment, subscribe, take a video, screenshot the show, share it. I so appreciate it. And remember, you can always DM me with questions on friendship stuff, advice on any podcast topics that you'd love for me to cover. And I make sure that they're all put in a list because this show is here to serve you. And I can only serve you at my best as long as you share with me what is it that you want guidance on and help with and what would delight you. If you enjoyed this podcast, please write a five-star review on iTunes. Not only will this make me super happy, but it will allow more listeners to find our special show. Simply help me help others. 